Hey, what's up? This is Seth with SethPerl.com. I hope you're having a great day. If you have a struggling student, if you're a parent or teacher of one of these students, um, check out my website, SethPerl.com. There's tons of solutions for you there. Sign up. I'll send you a free toolkit that will help you help your child. I'm going to talk a little bit about today about something that you might be familiar with. It's called attachment theory. And I want to talk about attachment theory because it's such, it's, it is one of the absolute most important things that I work with parents around that is extraordinarily helpful in terms of you being able to empower your children, whether you're a teacher or a parent. So there are three basic attachment theories. Now, experts um, define attachment theory differently. There are many nuances around this. You can go down that rabbit hole with a, a lot of experts out there and learn more about this. But to be very basic, there are these three general ways that we attach to other human beings. And what we ultimately want is healthy, secure attachment. Healthy, secure attachment where you have comfortable relationships with people, where you know you are okay. You are okay. You're going to be safe. When you need help, you are secure in knowing that you can come to yourself or you can come to other people and that they will be able to be there for you in a way that will help you when you need the help. So there are these three general types. The one we want to be in is this secure type. This is secure, healthy attachment. Uh, there's also an anxious, preoccupied type, and there's an avoidant, distant, dismissive type. So you can probably think of people you know right now, and you can probably think of somebody who you have a relationship with, whether it's a friend, a family member, a child, uh, somebody that you work with. Um, and you can probably think of somebody who is more on the anxious side with their relationships. They're more preoccupied with relationships. They're very much concerned with the, what's going on with them emotionally. Their emotions are huge around relationships. They're very much in their heart, and almost to a fault. And then you probably know people who are almost too much in their head, too logical, too rational. They're avoidant distant, dismissive when it comes to relating. Now, these are styles. And what I want to tell you about these styles, first of all, is that if you were, are going to quantify it, about 20% of people identify as anxious, about 25% of people ident identify as avoidant, and about 65% of people identify as secure. But I want you to imagine these as spectrums. These are not boxes that we fit into, okay? This is not a checklist where we just find out we're this type and that's it. We can change styles throughout our life. We can change how we are relating with different people. So we can move to different places in the spectrum. But ultimately, what we're all seeking as human beings, as mammals, is to be in relationship that feels healthy, secure, that feels comfortable where we know we're okay. So if you forget everything else I say in this entire video from this moment on, what we are seeking is, are we relating with people where we feel okay? And are we able to be there for people where we help them to feel okay? It's very simple when you think of it in those terms. So I'm gonna talk about a few things that will help you with the children that you're working with. When they are in need of help, you want them to feel okay and comfortable and secure coming to you. You want them to know that you're going to be there for them. How can you do this? Well, for you, the parent or teacher, and for the child you're working with, the more mindful you are about attachment theory, about what comes up for you with attachment, about when you feel anxious, when you feel avoidant, the more mindful you are of those things. And I use the word mindful uh, interchangeably with other words like conscious. The more conscious you are of how you respond or react in these situations, the more self-awareness you have, the more mindfulness you have, metacognition you have around these things, uh, the more awareness you have around this stuff, the better you are going to be able to access or find resources that are going to help you when you need help, or the more you are aware of this as the adult, the more you are going to be able to access powerful tools that are going to help the children that you're working with to feel secure and comfortable so that they can move through the things that they need help with. So the more effective you'll be, the more mindful you are around these things. Next, the more grounded you are in the moment, the more present you are, the more grounded you are in who you are, the more you're going to be able to access your own tools when you are in need, but also the more you will be able to be grounded and solid and firm for the child or children that you are working with and trying to serve. Next, when you are in need of help 
And whether or not you're anxious, avoidant, or secure, you're going to want to connect. Connection is where it's at. That's what's going to help us feel secure when we have a secure, a sec- not an unhealthy, but a secure, healthy connection with people. We can connect through eye contact, through a hug, through conversation, through listening. Who can you connect to? And when the kid, when the child, when the student, whether or not they're a college student or they're a kindergartner, it doesn't matter. When they're in need, okay, you want to help them to feel connected. And another word for connection here is attunement. And this attunement and connection where somebody feels heard, they feel seen, they feel felt, they feel understood, they feel known, they feel cared for. Attunement has also everything to do with holding space. When you are holding space for somebody, when they're in need, when they need help, when they need to come to you, you want to hold space for them. You want to be able to be there for them in a healthy, secure way, not an anxious, preoccupied way, not an avoidant, dismissive way. You want to be there for them in a way that when they leave the interaction for with you, they're able to say, oh, I'm okay. This person, they, they may not be perfect. They may still be anxious. They may be, still be disturbed or whatever, but they're able to leave the interaction. The child that you're working with, again, college student or kindergarten, doesn't matter. They're able to leave the interaction with you saying, wow, I feel a little bit better. I I feel a little bit safer knowing that this secure person is there for me. I know that this person can hold space for me. I know that this person has tried to connect with me. I feel a little bit more grounded. I feel more solid. I feel safer. Okay, Uh, That's a great word to use here too. When you talk about secure attachment, we are able to feel okay, which means we are able to feel emotionally safe, held, understood, known, seen, heard. So with that... That's really all I wanted to break down for you. This is not a checkbox thing. This is a spectrum. We all move in and out of these tendency, these places at different times, but we're all seeking the same thing at these times. And when you're aware of that and you can come and hold space in that sort of a way, you can be more effective and be more helpful. Um, The reason this came up is I did a post recently on anxiety and there was a huge response um, in my email inbox from readers uh, about the anxiety post. So it's just such a huge problem that so many people are dealing with with their kids and with anxiety. And this is something that will help so much. Uh, The more you're able to be a secure base for them, the more you're also gonna be able to be of service when they're dealing with these times of anxiety. With that, I hope you're having a great day and um, sign up for my site, SethPerlow.com and I'll send you a toolkit that'll help you help your kid, uh, whether you're a teacher or a parent. And uh, thank you for what you do. See you soon.